Kenny and Lord to be here and good to see each of you this morning. I enjoyed the good teaching and the good singing. I tell you, God's been good to you. God's been good to all of us. And I tell you, He's blessed us with everything that we need on this side of life. And He'll never leave us and forsake us. But He go with us even unto the way. If you have your Bible this morning, let's turn over to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 12, I'm going to begin reading verse 1, just read a few verses there. See what the Lord have us to see in it. And, and I, I tell you, we, we, we desire your prayers. We need your prayers this morning. I certainly can't uh, preach from our own mind. We can't store up uh, God's greatness and all that within our carnal mind. Uh, we was driving up here this morning, and, and normally we can't even remember the name of the church. And, and I was driving along and got to looking at the beauty of God's handiwork, the mountains and all like that. And, and, and also, uh, when we saw the mountains, we thought back to the day, the time of Noah, and, and, and uh, when God opened the uh, the, deep, the waters of the deep and the force that he'd had and pushed all this beauty up for you and I to see. And we was driving along, and all of a sudden, we seen the sign said, Welcome to North Carolina. And I said, Oh, me, I... How'd I miss that exit down there? And so, uh, uh, so all of a sudden, any uh, uh, mental outline of a message that we had soon was suddenly thrown out the window. So, so we we just come here trusting the Lord this morning, and and I'm glad that He don't send us alone. But uh, when He saved us, He put His Holy Spirit within us, and if we're going to get any any message from God, He's going to have to come through and by His leadership this morning. And uh, as we read these few verses, you pray. And I told Adam, I said, "Now, Adam, you need to go ahead and preach. It's uh, just go ahead. You know that don't uh, that don't bother me. And uh, matter of fact, I, I said, thank you, Lord. You know, and that's how nervous we get. And, uh, uh, we see in these first few verses uh, as a reminder, uh, as God has inspired the writer to pen it down uh, to remind us about our Savior. And it reads like this. He said, "Wherefore." Seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sins which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking, to, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye, uh, lest ye be weary in your, uh, and faint in your minds. And that's a scripture that God has laid upon our heart. And as we sat him by this past week, God had laid it upon our heart to come this way. And uh, uh, if for nothing else, just to see our brother Adam, to fellowship with him and the church this morning. And like we'd already said, uh, it's already been a blessing to be here, seeing the children to get up and sing. And, and every time I look in the face of a child, I get a glimpse of the face of God. And, and uh, looking at their purity and their innocence. Uh, but knowing all at the same time, we are all born into this world and we're all sinners when that we become. And when we come to that age of accountability, knowing what sin is, also coming to know the gospel message, how that God loved us so that he sent his son into the world to die upon that old rugged cross. But we got to thinking about our brother. This scripture had come upon our heart. We began to read and we begin to think upon it and try to meditate upon it and to see what God would have us bring this way. But now we know this morning that Jesus, he is the Christ, the son of the living God. There's uh, uh, and we know he's the only one this morning and, and God sent him and God loved you and he loved me and as it, many had said throughout times that if I'd been the only one or if you had been the only one that had ever sinned on this side of life God would have still sent him and that's the depths and the heights of God's great love this morning but now I thought about our Savior and, and I tell you you'll find no better friend you'll find no better uh, one to walk with you day in and day out. Amen. And I know on this side of life, as you and I, and especially in these modern times in which we live and we're seeing uh, what is in the world and what's taking place, I tell you, I'm glad this morning that I not only can call him Jesus, 
I can call him friend this morning, Savior and Lord. But now here as a writer, now we know that all scripture this morning is given by the inspiration of God. And we know this morning that these men, and the Bible will also tell us that uh, men didn't just sit down and begin to think, well, what they had seen, and I need to write this down and keep a record of it. But no, they was inspired by the Holy Ghost. And it might have been the hand of man that the pen was in. But I tell you, as we look, and them being led by the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God, it was oh God himself sitting down and pinning down within these uh, this Bible that we have uh, his love and, and what he wants us to know and what he wants us to hear. And so here we see that uh, the writer pinned down and he began to think about the great cloud of witnesses there that, has, uh, that were compassed about. Now you and I, we didn't live in that damn time, but it's been handed down for 2,000 years there for you and I to hear. And men, they are staggered at it and they are doubted and they even some will say there's nothing to it. But it is, it's real this morning and he's alive and, and this is Jesus. Jesus this morning when I open it up and I begin to read and I begin to love and I not only see the word but I hear the voice of my father in glory uh, writing me a love letter from, uh, from the, uh, somewhere some might find he's far out there somewhere but he's here this morning he is with us and so the writer uh, he said there that we're compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses and so he reminds us and I, I don't need a reminder this morning to tell me about what's in this old flesh and to tell me how weak it is and how that it would fail if I let him have his way. But I like that scripture where he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We've got all them out done in the world and many are led by the devil this morning and, and they're held captivity and they're deaf and blind and we're facing all them and, and he would use them to come up against us this morning to fight and to try to tear us down and, and try to hinder our walk and, and stop us from going where God would have us to go. But when I look in the mirror, I see the greatest hindrance of all. This old man, this old flesh, uh, God forgave me and he's cleansed me from all sin and all unrighteous this morning. But there, this old flesh is still sinful in nature, but he put one greater in me than this part that's in the world to keep it under subjection and to keep it in where God could use but now he goes on he said now let us lay aside every weight and sin that do so oh, easily beset us and, and as I mean it say and you would say well I'm not perfect this morning brother Adam you know that and I know that this morning and God knows that so let us leave that part alone if there's something we've allowed come into our life that's handing our walk with Jesus Christ this morning let us get on our knees before they're on the altar before our Savior and cry out for the goodness and put it aside and let us get up and go on. I've not lived a perfect life. You know that. I know that. But now let us uh, try to get down to the message there about looking back. I can sit down on a, on a mourner's bench somewhere. I can sit down uh, on the, um, the seat of woe is me and I can keep on looking back and seeing everything in the past and seeing the bad things that the devil would try to bring up day in and day out but I can, I can push that aside and I can get up and go on. The Bible said there that any man laying his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. When I look back at him all I can see is I'm not fit but I can come to the cross and see what that precious blood of Jesus Christ when it shed from Calvary's cross and what it took there an old rotten sinner there, dead in the trespass of sin, reaching up and bringing me right on beyond the veil that was rent from top to the bottom and bringing me right on into the glory of God and say, God, I've forgiven him and God, I've washed him and Father says he's clean. He's mine now. And I tell you, I'm going to go and I'm going to shout the glory there for the living God. But now he told us that. He said, now lay all these things aside. If you go back and find a lot of them's dead today there. but you can go back and still find 
Amen. Say, well, I know Gary Miller. I know him long before. I know him when he's a little boy uh, growing up. And there ain't nothing to him. There ain't nothing good about him. And that would be true. But I tell you, the greater is he that is in here. Amen. The only good one about me this morning is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want him to be saved. And I tell you, I'm glad that God still saves old sinners this yes. morning. Here we go on down. And I remember a year or ago when I was reading this scripture and when I looked he, he told us now he said now now to run the race now uh, 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 one in the race I tell you there's a finish line out there he not worried about uh, there the starting line he not so worried about maybe a stumbling or anything like that along the way but he's got his sights there on that finish line and he's going to run this Christian race and he's going to go like there's only going to be one winner. But now all believers we know are winners either way. Whether you live, whether you die, you're still a winner either way. But I tell you, he's got, uh, uh, the writer's got this mentality in his heart. I'm going to run just as straight and run that straight and narrow way and I'm going to reach the finish line one day. And I tell you, along the way I want to be able to reach out uh, uh, on the right and I want to reach out on the left and I want to bring as many in for the glory of God and for my Savior there and lead them along the way to that finish line. But now he, he look, now listen church uh, you can either uh, be a write your own book or you can let him write it. And I tell you, you can uh, search and try to find, you can try to find faith enough to get you there and it'll come up short sometime. But I tell you, let the author and the finisher of faith he started down there uh, when you was a sinner, when you was lost and undone without God, He came and He come to call you. And when you heeded the call and you come on in for the glory of God and you accepted Him as your Savior, it was at that very moment upon the repentance and accepting Him as your Savior, God took that book of sin and God took that old man and He cast it as the Bible said, as far as the east is in the west. And I tell you, it goes on and on. And He said He cast it in the sea and he'll remember it no amen, more. Amen. I will glory be unto God. And he opened up there a book and your name is written in the book of life. It's written in the Lamb book of life. Amen. But I tell you, he started a new book. And I tell you, well, glad there that when I say here, I tell you, you're a child of God. He is your father this morning. I've got a birth certificate. It's got my mom and daddy's name on it. But I've got a spiritual one. It's got my father's name on it. It's got God on it. It's got Jesus on it. And it's got the mother church on it. That birthed me in to the great kingdom of God. And I tell you, he's the author. And he's the finisher of faith. And there might be a lot of talk about me. But that's all that's going to be done. You know, I get upset sometimes. A brother at all. But glory be unto God, they ain't writing in the book. I tell you, the, uh, the pens is in. The nail-scarred hand of my Savior. Well, glory. He wrote that book. Uh, there to tell me how to walk and how to live. But he told me there also where the end's going to come up and the finish line's at. One no glorious day. I know he's coming back and I watch for him day in and day out. And, and if, uh, if he's not come to call the church before my time runs out down here, I tell you he's going to come and call me. And I'm going to step out and over in glory. Uh, some say, well, you're going to have to go there in the grave. I tell you, oh, they're going to put in the grave and this old man, this old outward man that is corrupt and is going to corrupt away. But glory be unto God, he ain't going to forget me. I, I, my, my heart, and my soul, my spirit will be over there with him. To be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. But that old man, he still ain't going to forget him. When he formed us up from the dust of the ground, yes, it'll be burned in corruption, but one glorious day, it's going to come out of there uncorruptible. Are you glorified by and it's going to be as one writer said he said I don't know what that body will be but I do know that when he shall appear he said I shall be like him Amen. well glory I tell you I tell you hey, old man some said well it's a golden year I don't know about that I'd call it the lead years I tell you the way there that hold us back and they say oh so and so well he's over the hill no he ain't he 
might be uh, uh, down in the valley. But he, uh, one day we'll make that last climb. And we'll reach the top. Not by my strength. And not by your strength. And not the strength of the church. But it's going to be stood by the strength of Jesus Christ. When you get to the point, say, well, I, I just might as well quit. I might as well just sit down. I tell you, in your strength, it uh, seems like it's going as far as to go. But I tell you, that great one within you, yeah. uh, you stirred something up down yeah. there. Uh, Jeremiah, he got to the place, and I tell you, there ain't none of us. But Brother Adams went through what preachers like Jeremiah did. Yeah. I don't ever recall a reading in the book of Jeremiah uh, there where, uh, where there that he had ever seen a soul saved or he'd ever seen one repent. But he saw many and all reject there the word of God. They throwed him in the cistern. They throwed him in the dungeon. He didn't even got to the place and said, Lord, you deceive me. He said, I ain't going to mention your name no more. But he said, there's a fire down in that. It shut up in my bone and I could not stay. And I tell you, that's, a, that's what true salvation will do for you. Uh, you might sit down and say, I ain't going back uh, there to that church no more. But I tell you something to begin to stir down there. Uh, there and you uh, may sit down at the house of God. Usually you might get to thinking, so well, ain't nobody cares about me. Ain't no never need a meal going down there. I tell you, that's just old level of putting them things in your mind. And I tell you that, I tell you, great. He's great this morning. Uh, Jesus, and I tell you, uh, we think about the mourners bench sometimes. And as we're going to read just a little bit further, I got to thinking this morning, we got a mourners down beach down there. Well, ain't we got a joy bench? I tell you, somewhere, we, 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 we got the mourners bench and we come to mourn and shed tears there. Uh, uh, over ourselves sometimes and most of all for our lost people but I tell you there need to be a joy bench down there somewhere uh, 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 that oil in that bottle right there somebody had to squeeze that out and I tell you we'll get where we need to be we get on that old joy bench and they'll begin to squeeze and the oil of gladness will begin to come down and get way up there in her eyes and begin to run down her face uh, that's what we need down to the house of God uh, to recognize and to realize the gift that God has given unto us this morning and how much it is neglected. And I tell you, we get in the same right way. We go to church. Well, I go to church. Uh, there every time the doors open. Praise God, I'm our own. Even Wednesday night prayer meeting. Uh, there, but, but I tell you, we just get in the same right way. But I tell you, there's a whole lot. You know there's more lost people in the world right now than they've ever been in the history of time. And I tell you, we have a hard time getting one. Winning one to the Lord. Uh, you say, well, the devil just got so much out there for him. And that he has. But I tell you what we're really saying, the devil's got more power than God, but he don't this morning. Amen. And uh, Jesus said, no man can come unto me except my Father draw him. The drawing power of God. Uh, and we need to live a life. I don't, I don't care how deep in the valley we may seem to see, we need to let the glory and the joy of the Lord shine forth out of our life. Amen. Yeah, you find something every day, especially you got a loved one sick and dying or a baby with cancer. Yeah, that'd rip your heart out. Uh, but I tell you, still stand and say the Lord's still in control. Yeah. God's still on the throne this morning. I know the wickedness in the leadership of the, of the countries and, and, and the, the world today, but I read there, I can't remember, maybe in Psalms there, that where he's going to shake these nations and he's going to shake their leaders. And listen, church, the church is, is the, the greatest uh, thing upon the face of the earth today. The wife, the bride of Jesus Christ. But I remember reading he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Faith, faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I said, sometimes faith is easy, but when it's you and when you cry out unto God and it seems like he's nowhere near and it seems like he don't hear, I tell you how far a uh, uh, faith go. My faith by itself wouldn't be nothing. But the faith in Jesus Christ and his faith that he carried him all the way to the cross and into glory. That's the faith that I trust in this morning. But he said there, who looked for the, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. The joy, and I remember years ago reading that. Who for the joy that was set before him. And I said, here is Jesus. And he, we know he's speaking about Jesus. But he was facing the cross. And he was going into the garden of Gethsemane. 
and he's going to take uh, three of his preachers with him. And he said, now sit ye here a while while I go yonder and pray. And he fell down and he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. And I tell you, he's headed to, uh, 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 for torment. He is headed for hell on the cross. Not going down in the heart of the earth and going to hell down there, but hell on the cross. And when you compare uh, the crucifixion with the cries of the rich man, you see them all right there on the cross. Uh, and the wrath of the almighty God that he stood between God's wrath and you and I, the lost and dying world, and he took it all upon himself. The joy that was set before him. The joy that was set before him. Paul, he said, I'll joy in tribulations. After he had prayed and cried, said, Lord, uh, he, and he besought that one thing thrice, three times to the Lord. And, and he cried out, but God would not take it away, the thorn in the flesh. The, what it was, the old devil that uh, buffeted him. It didn't matter though. You know, you've got buffet this morning. You know what a buffet is. God laid him right on the buffet and said, there he is, devil, just try him. Take a, eat him up. But Paul, he finished. He said, I finished the course. Amen. And I kept the faith. Yes, yes. And I tell you, that's a, uh, that's one of those cloud of witnesses. Paul went at the cross when he seen him cross and crucified, but he stood down there when they stoned Stephen. And he heard Stephen when he, they cast their coats at his feet and he gave his consent. He was a religious man. Yes, he was. But he looked up, and as Stephen looked up, he said, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of God. But Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, now remember, he looked at the joy that was set before him. And he said, Father, if it be thy will, take this cup from me. But not as I will, thine be done. They ain't none of us uh, enjoy suffering. And if, if we've got a bypass to go around it, every one of us would certainly go that way. Amen. But sometimes God leads you right down that path, right into it. But I tell you, and we get so fixed and focused on it, on that, that thing that is facing and it's going to lay hold on us. But I tell you, he said he looked into the joy that was set before him. And you and I, it's not what we're going through today. It's what we're going to get to experience when it's all over. Amen. And I tell you, old age, I tell you, I've got aches and pains in places I didn't even know I had the places these days. I can't walk very far uh, if I had to run from a bear. I'm in trouble because he's going to get me because uh, I can't get away. But I tell you, I've got one and on our side this morning and he's in us he said I'm in you and you're in me and we're in the father but Jesus there, he said father three times he cried out each time he went and he found the apostles asleep here. and the third time he said go on uh, take your rest but he said father and in that cup what is in that cup uh, there, uh, what he said here he looked despising the shame he looked to the joy but he despised the shame and despising means far more than just hatred it's looking down on that that you in no way would reach down and lay hold of it but he is going to drink it he's going to drink the wrath of the almighty God he's going to become sin for us and drink uh, this bitter to cut that you and I deserve to drink and our life and our sins was in that cup but he is going to drink it all but yet he said he looked into the joy that was set before him despising the shame now look there we know and I believe I'd be correct this morning if he died for all the sins of the whole world did he not do that he said that in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that uh, included everybody, did it not? From Adam right on down to the life that is being born. But yet if God sent his son to become sin for you and I. Yet himself he did not sin. And I tell you but he took mine and he took yours despising the shame of the cross. Now you and I, you know, some might say, well, I'm not I, I'm not a very a bad person but sin is sin. It, if a one at all you've been created uh, made throughout life uh, that would got you lost and I tell you we was all lost before we got saved these children sitting here this morning if they've not been saved yet when they come to the age of accountability they got to realize that it's ain't mom and dad anymore that's accountable but it is them that is accountable for sin 
and it's thou that made a savior this morning. But now let us look. Uh, now we got the modern days and times that we, we've got coming along. Uh, and I tell you, God has been good to us. He's been good to me. I've got a fine house down there. It might not be what a lot would like to have, but I tell you, it's a, a, a brick house there. And, and I tell you, it's a lot better than what we started out when me and Therese got married. We, uh, we've moved in to a little old two-room shack. Daddy owned there, and it's all a lean in one way. Looked like it like was fall any time. When the wind blows, this curtain would stand out away from the windows. And we had that outdoor uh, thing down behind the house. You know, you had to run down there. But I tell you, I, but we've got them right in our own house. Son's got two or three or, or one in each every bedroom. Ain't God been good to yeah. us? And I tell you, there, there's a time that we went down to the house of God. Uh, they had them little fans there that, and uh, the women get them, the little children get them. Hey, if you just sit down close to them, you get some wind on The old preacher preaching and I tell you, he's soaking wet in just a, a few moments when you get up to preach. Ain't God been good to yeah. us? Oh, yes, he has. But don't take it for granted because God can take it all away in a moment and in a second. Yeah. You can blink your eyes and, and, and before you blink, everything be all right. And that's how quick you can blink. And next time, the whole world, your whole world is turned upside down. And I tell you, God didn't promise. Uh, you know, we hear preachers from time to time. And they got them little old sayings. And they kind of put you on the spot what they're doing. And they'll get up and they say, is it hard to live a Christian life? And Adam, I just nod my head, yeah. When I'm doing what that Bible tells me to do, the old devil's going to make it hard. Then they'll come up and say, well, the way of a transgressor is hard. And we know that. A child of God is to turn back and get out yonder. There's going to come some chastising. You, you read it further down on into the chapter. But uh, they need to sit down and read about these men of God where they cut, took a, a James out there and cut his head off and said well, because it pleased the people they, they proceeded further and they took Peter also. They was going to kill Peter that day but God would have done with it. And now God got glory out of James' life and he got a book pinned down with his hand uh, and by the leadership of the Spirit for you and I, we heard from it this morning. And if you if you read through the book of James and say, well, I, it didn't get, I wouldn't nothing there get me. Or you need to go back and read it again. Mm -hmm. And look, I tell you, well, uh, this old flesh, if you let loose of it, it's going to get wrong. And it's going to find yourself in the ditch somewhere. But now he looked. And now let us look. And we're living in a wicked world. Hell itself is roaming the land. And uh, some said, well, the devil will never... Fool me. He fooled a perfect woman down there in the Garden of God. Amen. The Garden of Eden. And I tell you, he even fooled David sometimes. Yes, Got his eyes set on something down there he ought not been looking at. We preach on him, brother, and we burn him up, but we never preach on that little gal climbed up there on the roof. Amen. And I tell you, he stripped herself off naked there and prayed around. And I tell you, uh, well, we'll get, you'll get wrong. I don't care. You might think you're strong, but you won't find your safe on your face. Mm -hmm. of begging God, say, oh, Lord, how did I get in this mess, and I mean, and I tell you, keep your eyes on Him, look into the joy yes, that is set before Him. And so, uh, look, you know, I, I tell you, I remember a time preachers preached, uh, it's wrong to have a television. And I, I about go along with that today. You, the stuff is on there, and I'll just show them pitiful little dogs, all these little baby dogs. <laughs> and listen, church, you know, I know some of you got dogs, and, and I enjoy, I don't have one today, but it seems like I get in the road, get run over or something, I get attached to them. Uh, and then uh, uh, my, my daddy had a little chihuahua dog, and the night he died, that little dog got up in the bed with him and just cried and howled. He knows, you know, even that little animal knows what death is. And I tell you, they'll show them, why don't they get on there and show uh, this bunch there, and the government said it's all right to abort a little child. Why don't they show it on there, the doctor taking a full, full grown baby there uh, and full term baby there and pulling it down there and piercing the back of its skull. Why don't they show them things? And I tell you, uh, we're living in a wicked world. Uh, and I tell you, and they show all this other stuff. It's ungodly. And the Bible tells us it's a shame to even speak to the evil that they do. And they're showing it and praying it right there on the television right here in the world. And they're trying to cram it down your and I thoughts, uh, throats this morning. I tell you, I, I'll not go along with it. And I will preach against it. I tell you, this morning, a man's a man, the woman's a woman. What you're born into the world, that's how you're going to die, and that's how you're going to stand before God. But they'll take them in the kindergarten classes. 
this wickedness. Yes, sir. And, and, and it seems like it's going on and on and on. And you and I, we stand up against it. Adam, we go down there and stand in the yard and start preaching, aren't they? Put us in jail. Bless you, and and they, this wickedness will go on. I tell you, we're living in the days and times of lawlessness. Again, pointing to the return of Jesus Christ. And that's my joy this morning. Yes, I'm ready to go. And some days I, I, I'm like a Paul there writing in one place. He said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to part and be with Christ. But I look, uh, Paul said, but it's need for you that I remain. And what it means that he still has some gospel to preach. He still had some mission work to do. I, I look up and I've still got, I've got grandchildren that need a Savior this morning. One, she's coming up soon to be 18 year old, but her mind is deceived by uh, false religion, false doctrines, and things like that. Oh, I tell you, they say, well, you can get saved, and, and, and you got to wait and get people to lay hands on you, get the Holy Ghost. No, that's a lie straight out of hell down there at Cornelius' house while Peter preached the Holy Ghost when they believed in Jesus Christ immediately. The Spirit of God fell upon them. And I tell you this morning, if I was a devil, that's what I'd want. I'd want, I said, well, that missionary Baptist, they're on bar. They're crazy about Jesus Christ. I need to raise up one just about like them. But I tell you, in any place, they turn them all across this country, and, and, and they say it's real bad down the land. Uh, a woman getting up claimed to be the pastor and the preacher. That's a lie straight out of hell. Yes, That's an abomination this morning. She's put on that it pertains to man. I didn't make the choice to preach. God called me. I just made the, he just, I just got in a place where I is either accepted or I was going to be missed. And I tell you, some say, well, God don't speak to you. He speaks to me every day. When he called me to preach, he spoke to me. When he talked with me. And I run, and I run, and I run. And I was doing all right till he became silent. Amen. I sat in church, and you, you know there's the Spirit of God moving the house of God. I'd even moved up as close, far on the front seat, Brother Allen. I was going to be holy, you know. I was going to sit right there. Let him call somebody else. I'm going to sit right here. The Spirit of God went and began to move, and you know he's moving over there. And there'd be one sitting beside him, and you could, you could feel and experience it touching that man, but he'd jump over your head. When a child of God gets in that place, you're miserable, and you're not going to be happy. And you're not going to have the oil of gladness and, and, and joy until you're doing just what he asked you to do. Now, he won't force you. He didn't force me to preach. He didn't force you. He said, right, Garrett, that's what I want you to do. That's what I put you in this life to go preach my gospel. But I tell you, it's been so good, Brother Adam. Now, there's been some wars and battles. Yes, I have. And I've been hurt. Yes, I have. But that's all right. I, he didn't tell us we wouldn't get wounded in the battle. But I tell you, he told us uh, he's got some oil over there. That he can anoint that and, and, and that water uh, start running all over again. But now he looked for the joy that was set before him. But he despised the shame. Now he was taken through this cup and on the cross. He took our sins on himself. And he nailed them to that old bloody cross. But he said he looked for the joy. He got to the place and down there in the garden. He said, Father, not mine. But thine be done. And it pleased him. God sent him. And I know Pilate down there when he tried. He said, Know you not that I have the power to loose thee or to crucify thee? Jesus said, Thou that had no power over me at all, except my Father, give it to me. So he gave his life. No man took it from him. He gave it. They didn't have to force him down on that cross. He laid down. That the Bible said, Cursed is any man that hangs upon the tree. He took and bore my curse and your curse and the children here, our curse. So how should we carry him day in and day out? He said, If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Now he's done being crucified. He ain't going to be crucified no more. That's what upsets me about these uh, preaching you lose your salvation. I tell you, but if they lose, if they if they did lose it, they couldn't get it back. Because there's no other sacrifice. No other Jesus won. In the old testament, year after year, year after year, they brought a sacrifice. 
was on that day, on that day, when he looked up and said, Father, it is finished. The price had been paid. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. But now, the glory, the glory of God. I've got a little glimpse of it along the way, along the journey. But one day, I'm going to see him as he is. He's coming. And I tell you, these mountains are going to roll back. That eastern sky is going to open. And I say one day, it could be today. When I went to bed, sometimes I go to bed, Brother Charles at night, and I don't give his coming a thought. But I tell you, he could come while we sleep. That's why you could die in your sleep. A lot of people die in their sleep. That's why when we go to bed at night, we need to make sure everything's all right between us, between God, between our brother, between our sister, between us, between the church. And so here this morning, uh, we, we, uh, he endured the cross. He endured it. And I tell you, that's that's a lot more than just said, well, just have to put a go on. But the way that I look up words, Brother Adam, I can write them down. Sometimes I look up words and I don't even understand the, the, the words I use in the explanation. I, I'm just a, I'm just an old country boy raised on a farm, cloud coming up and corn back and hay, milk cows. And, uh, but I remember as a little farm boy over there in the old testament by the name of Amos. He said, oh, I ain't none of the sons of the prophets or any of that. But he said, go up into that northern kingdom, Israel, and preach. What does I preach? Repent. And the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's John's message. But, uh, but uh, uh, his message was prepare to meet thy God. And, and I tell you, there ain't a lot of preparing going on today. Uh, these old people, it's uh, they're, they're buying new houses and going debt for that thing. They're going to go right on and on. I said, I was preaching all day, and I said, when I, I said, I'm, I'm retirement age, man, we're college. And, and, and I said, I'm going to run for a federal uh, a, a senate or congress. And, and if I get elected, I'm going to move up there in that White House nursing home, you know. And, and they make millions of dollars. And if we go down here, they'll take everything we got. And I tell you, but, but I'm glad this world ain't at home with you. Yes. And I, and I, I, the Lord's blessed me to get put a little money in savings. I've got enough to bury me. Uh, but but uh, uh, I tell you, I've got far more on the other side. Yes, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Then shall all these things be added unto you. Yeah. And God has blessed us. But too many times we let the blessings of God lead us away from God. Uh, and and uh, we neglect to think about his goodness. Uh, the Bible, the, that's... Uh, the most prized possession you got is your Bible. And we can look in history throughout the dark ages. It was illegal to own a Bible. And if you could get one, it was very expensive. You couldn't afford it. And if you got caught with it, the chances was they couldn't burn you for stuff. And they said, well, they can't understand it. But thank God, God put it in somebody's heart and mind uh, to find the original. Then, of course, they, they found some old ones, manuscripts over in the trash can and uh, brought all these new Bibles out. But this, that one's like, it's good. And King James, it stood over 400 years. And I said, you'll never convince me that God allowed this church to eat out of something that uh, wasn't right. Amen. It wasn't clean. And that's perfect. And so I found some mistakes in it. No, you made a mistake. But I tell you, we need to show. And I know there's a lot of times we'll go day in and day out and say, boy, the devil just riding me today. The devil just kicking me and doing this and doing that. Won't you go out and say how God good been, how good God's been to you? If, if, he, if he chose to do nothing else for me, Jesus is enough. He looked into the joy. And church, you and I got joy. I know the devil's out to stay, take it away, steal, kill, and destroy. Take it away from us, a lot of other things. And now, listen, God still holds all power. My lost people, your lost people, we, uh, we, we've just uh, justified the devil in keeping all the stuff. Listen, God got in bed at me. That preached word got in bed at me. I, I, I go to sleep, but then I jump up. And the last night, 
I tell you, God convicted me. It was under conviction and dealing with me in such a world that I even got a glimpse off into hell. Some says, well, that was just a nightmare, a bad dream. No, it's far more. I was conscious, but I couldn't get my eyes open. I couldn't get up off my couch. I was listening to the radio, and I might have shared it with you before. Charlie Daniels saying, uh, the devil went down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal. I said, he stopped right there at my house that night, and he is fixed to lay hold on me. He done had a hold of me. And I tell you what, I, darkness, darkness. You ain't never seen a darkness in this world like hell is. A darkness. And I tell you, you say, well, I don't, I'm not afraid of the dark. You will be there. I'm talking about total darkness. And everything heaven is, hell sobs. Some says, well, there's love in hell. That, that rich man, he cried out, no, there ain't no love in hell. It's hatred, anger, weeping, gnashing of teeth. There ain't no front seats and back seats of hell. There ain't no parties in hell. But I tell you, the devil's got so many conditions. <coughs> You say, well, I'm saved. Well, what about your children? I've talked to people, witness to them, try to get them to come to church. And they say, well, I was saved years ago. I used to go to church. I said, well, what about your children? Then they stood and go on. They said, well, 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 I think they're all right. But I tell you, I don't mind dying, me thinking they're all right. I want them to know, and I want, I want to know. I want the, God to give you a testimony when he saves you, and he'll keep you. And if you get in a mess, he'll, he'll say, now, come on, son. Come on, you. First of all, you know you wasn't supposed to be down here. Yeah. You went against some order, you got and you got self in this mess. You blame it on the devil, whoever you want to, but you done. So they come on and they just get cleaned up. Open that word up, start washing. Start washing. My natural body's about to be washed. It's stinking in a short time. But I tell you, in my soul, my spirit it had never seen. But I tell you, I gotta gotta get cleaned up. Get this flesh back where it needs to be. And let that inner part shine out. But now he looked into the joy that was set before him. And there, and we just touched just a little bit what's going on in the world. Listen, as we mentioned the television, I wish they put on these little boys and little girls. Listen, the Bible calls it, uh, the Lord hit me just a little bit, the child man stealers, the kidnapped. I wish they put on that yeah. and show this drug trade. It's a billion dollar business. That's why it's not being attacked and fighting against by leadership and governments that didn't pay off. They'll take young girls and they will steal them away, kidnap them, and they'll rape them. And when that baby is born, they'll take that baby and harvest its organs. Now that's going on in our world today, in God's world. But we live day in and day out from deaf eye to deaf ear and a blind eye to I don't know what to do about preaching. I don't either. But I know a God in heaven that knows how to stop. And I tell you something I said to my, I get my grand, my, my little ones, I, I, I get them every day. Uh, all of them, but boy, I get my mind somebody's going to get it. Now you talk about wake, waking up to a nightmare. And these people have and you don't know when you go right down town here or, or Gettenberg or Pridgen Forge, the perverts, it's I, dear child, and looking for a change. How many is looking for a change maybe to grab hold of yours? But we go on, we want to live in good times. But I'm going to tell you, there's one that's kidnapping them away every day. It's old Satan, little by little. These children, they're going to go down there and put in schools, and the teachers can't teach what needs to be taught. They got a mandate. Started a few years ago. Administration. Hitler said, if I can control the books, I can control the people. And that's what's been happening for the last many years. Well, even in my job, teaching that evolution. Went through school uh, eight years. We started in the first grade, but went through eight years and did not have one teacher stand up and teach against evolution. But when they come to it, they all talk. I don't remember what year, maybe third or fourth grade when we started studying science. But I got freshman in high school, my science teacher. When he came up on this evolution, he said, I'm not teaching that field. He said, I'm not teaching that. He said, I don't believe it. He said, you can believe what you want to, but he said, I'm not going to teach it. He's a Christian man. And I tell you, we got to stand against it. I said, well, that's them. Listen to them, some of yours. And there's 
Son of Man. And I tell you, when we come to God's house, I like to have a good time in the house of God. Yes, I do. There's nothing better when the Spirit will start rolling. And then the rest of rest. And this preacher will get up and he don't have to give a thought. It, 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 I don't like to preach at it when I have to think about it. I like for it to roll out in here. And it's done out for you. You couldn't, you couldn't have stopped it if you wanted to. It done roll out. And, and I tell you, church, I love you. And I, I, I'm thankful God gave us the opportunity to come back this way this morning. And, and you know, winter months, I can't, I, that's where I can't see, can't drive at night. These little mountain roads, and even this morning, uh, I couldn't remember which turns to make, but I thank God you put a sign by the way. And there's a sign by the way up there of every sin. And it said, wide is the gate. I can't quote it. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life everlasting. But wide is the gate that leads to destruction. That sign said you're on the wrong, you made the wrong turn. I got up, I could have kept going uh, up, up the interstate. So, well, I didn't make a mistake. I know where I'm going. And in a little while, I'd end up South Carolina. But as soon as I seen the sign, I said, I, don't, I couldn't remember the next exit. Thomas Den, I think. I said, I got to get to I said, I ain't going to make it today. But if, they said, well, you messed up. You might as well go back home. And I said, well, I'll go anyway. They haven't kept preaching. I said, well, I'll keep preaching. The church, I'll get us on this morning. Don't forget what God said to us. Anything that I might have said to you this morning, it don't matter. You remember to forget it. If I have said something wrong, just get up and take the word of God and correct it. And be all right with me. But we get a song this morning. This altar is open. I don't know how you carry all the calls out, but you know, this altar is open. The pastor, he set an example here this morning. I don't know. I wasn't here Wednesday night, but I, knowing Adam, I'm sure he couldn't have said anything. Else. Hurt, hurt somebody and if he did he didn't do it intentionally I promise you that because I know he would come by and hit me a many times when he started past the church and I, I'm sure not come by to help him get over getting over I'm right? but looking across the river a little while we're going to go stand your feet this morning you children this morning if you're not saved you'll be saved this morning and if God's dealing with you and there's a fear in your heart you got to the place you're afraid. Maybe at night, my my, my youngest son, uh, when he was young, he'd, he'd go to bed at night. He wouldn't turn the light on. Went in there one night, Brother Adam, and I thought he was asleep. I flipped the light off quickly. He jumped up. He said, turn that light on. Turn that light on. And I'd go and weep my bed, Brother Adam. I said, Lord, he's long still. He's deep. He's sleeping. And I can't say I've took him to church today since the day is born. And I've tried to live a life in front of him. But I, I know I messed up along the way, too. But I said, Lord, please save me. One, one, one night in a revival down there, Calvary, several years ago, he's a grown man, got a son of his own. He come to that all the three boys, three boys. He made it to the front seat. I said, son, you want me to say? He said, yes. God gave him a little extra strength. They get up in the hall on that hall. And he got it. He came up. And they testified. The Lord had saved their soul. And he went home that night. And he turned the light down. And because there's a light shining on the inside. And Jesus, he is the light of the world. And he's a light to that, in that soul. Somebody this morning. God didn't just send us here to entertain the church or just even to be a help to that. But he laid a message on her heart to bring. Do you have that joy this morning? Are you looking for that joy? Listen, child of God, has, has Satan come by and got your sight set on other things and it's take away your joy? Is there sin there that's robbing you of that joy? Lay it on the altar this morning.